Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Cordon. We are back for some more Pillars of Eternity 2 Deadfire. We are currently in the Kahanga Palace. So this is the palace in Neketaka. We spoke to the Queen, we spoke to the Prince, we got some new quests. And we're now going to start exploring the rest of this building and, you know, speaking to whoever has like a unique name here. We're going to start with this Valiant Diplomat. Ado Watcher. Clearly, you are an interesting man to know. Okay, she doesn't have anything to say yet, apparently. <laughs> it's very funny looking. You meet a tall, brown-haired man dressed in full plate mail. That might not normally catch your eye, but his mail is unusual. Colored a deep green and emblazoned with the image of a golden tree. Hand on the pommel of his sword, he watches the crowd go by with keen eyes. Relaxed, yet fully alert. He narrows his eyes when he spots you. What do you need of me? He looks at you warily, as if he is deciding whether you are a snake or uh, a snake that might bite. He has the voice of an Omawa. Well? Tell me about yourself. He's initially hesitant, unsure of your intent. Eyes narrowed, he sizes you up, then nods. Interesting armor you have there. I suppose it is. Are you familiar with the shield bearers of Saint Elka? We are a paladin order. I kind of am. Word of our order travels far, then. Good. He clears his throat dramatically. I am the son of a disgraced noble family. My father and brothers were executed for treason when I was a boy. Rightfully so, I must add. Wow. My mother, sister, and I were thrown out on the street. All we had to our names was a trunk full of heirlooms. One of them was this suit of armor, which belonged to my eldest brother. Now I endeavor to live up to its promise and redeem my family's honor. Hmm. That's the long and short of it, really. Oh, can you? Okay, this is one of the guys that can teach his stuff. Can you teach me what you've learned as a member of the Shield Bearers? Well, you would need to become a Shield Bearer yourself to really learn it all. I suppose I can teach you a thing or two as we stand here. The privilege will run you 3,000 copper, however. Okay, so this guy is survival and athletics. Uh, I don't like. think so. Man, I really hope I can remember these people when I have some more money to spend. Because I do want these things. So I... Have I been here? I don't think so. Let's try to steal everything. Atepu. The raucous screeching of the birds in the cages is endless. The Juana depiction of Helia is almost menacing in its intensity. The cartographer bites his thumbnail and mutters to himself. Strange. Though simple in construction, the sink is clean and tidy. Okay. Someone has finished off a quick meal here. Well, let's go to the upper floor. We do have a pet to take in. Okay, so from here we have to go this way. While Arui's collection is impressive, few of the blades are actually sharp. Oh, this is the Room of the Prince? Whatever creature these jaws belong to is clearly massive. It's kind of weird that the guard just lets me get into the, the, the Prince's room. Nice and but <laughs> I'll take it. Juana Colors, an exceptional large shield. Awesome. A fine spear. Storm Speaker's Warning. My Prince, I have warned Kamalka against calling rain over the outsider forts, but still she delights in rusting their weapons and muddying their soil, which tells me that someone must have put her up to this trickery. Someone she trusts. She admires you, my Prince, but I say that she is a storm you cannot control. Onekaza will not thank you for prodding the eels then. You have given enough faith to Trickster and Gati, now take Amida's example and await the hatching of the egg. The turbulent skies speak of change and upheaval. I say let them come, but save your strength for the day the skies open. I have recommended K that Kamauka seek you out. There is a place for her in the fleet if you find yourself in need of Amida's sharpened beak. For the Isles, Storm Speaker Baudo. Okay. What else do we have? Nothing over here. You songwriters need a cold. guild. That's a lot of people. Discipline. The quiet gurgling of the fountain is a constant backdrop in this spacious chamber. Not so. 
We speak in the tongue of Ngati and Amira. Your pretty dances may upset the puddle, but we command the wind and sky. Hey, I have missed our little talks. <laughs> Akira. Are you guys unique? No. So Barati. He smells one touched by the great eel, does Barati. <laughs> A sizable Omawa tilts his head up and looks down his nose at you, flaring his nostrils with hungry interest. You are a man who sits across a fire with death, Akira. The pallid knight and I are on familiar terms. He nods, clasping his hands with quiet delight. For glutting mighty Tangaloa and hurling foes into their next life, Barati can offer payment. Oh, bounties? Coins for <clears throat> feeding hungry gods. Akira? Akira. Rewarding those who appease the great eel. This is Barati's cause. May the beasts of the dreaming lands never know famine. Barati inclines his head and touches his brow, holding the pose with deep reverence. What bounties do you have available? Tangaloa rolls a hungry eye toward Dichila, a valian captain who scouts for luminous Adra in sacred lands. Barati squeezes his knuckles until they're bone white. <clears throat> I'll take the bounty. The cure. Tangaloa knew it would be so. Dechila sails her voyager Alicio around the waters south of Nikitaka. The great eel hungers for her soul. Barati touches his brow and inclines his head. Okay. <clears throat> well, so far there appear to be more bounties than actual quests in this game. Amira's blessings. Oh, I like that. What pages lie strewn between the books hold a strange arrangement of letters, not all in the Juana alphabet. Nice, give me the experience. Potion of the focused mind and potion of the resilient body. Cool. I wonder if this is the Queen's room. <clears throat> but it doesn't look like it. Okay. Okay, so that, that's this floor. I do want to come out here because I think this is where the, the abandoned doggy is. And I want to pick him up. I shall never abandon a doggy in distress. It's not... Oh, it's not here. It's there. Okay. So let's go up another floor. Uh, no, over here. Kahanga Palace rooftop. Doggy, doggy, doggy. Oh. Wait, I don't... <coughs> I actually want to be in the... In this, in the... Um, the lower floor. Motes of light dart through the winding streams of water like schools of fish. Man, the water shaping is very well done. Oh, the queen. With some elder tigers. Okay. So what say you, queen? You make a habit of turning up uninvited. The queen has affected a far more relaxed posture. A pair of tigers lounge indolently beside her seat. Kohopa. Tangaloa. Welcome, I guess. Yeah, these are the cats, for sure. She nods onto the cats. They fix you with attentive stares that cause many of the courtiers and attendants to gasp. Watch out. When these things lick, well, I hope for your sake you're not ticklish. <laughs> you travel with a brave crew, Watcher. Onekaza smiles up at you there. Yes, he is. Oh. They're not budging until the Alpha shows her teeth. Okay. I was hoping for some reference to Mr. Piggy. Akira, but you have a way with the wild. And diplomacy, I say. She smiles as her cats look to her for approval. There are many leagues between here and Hasongo. I trust you have packed for the journey. She raises a quizzical brow. I just want to look around. Then look. Take in every delight within reason. But do not waste my time. She dismisses you with a casual wave, but you catch a trace of amusement in the gesture. The boldness of foreigners. She shakes her head and strokes the nape of a tiger's neck. Oh, look, there's a birdie on top of the otter. I think this is an otter. It might not be, but, you know, 
<laughs> so, upper floor, this should be the outside, right? Yeah. Oh, it's I a cat, not a dog. To be frequently at odds with others in your order. Some of my brethren don't understand why I gotta do what I do, but I'm not beholden to them. I can certainly sympathize. Okay. Prissy. So Prissy. Plus fifteen percent healing done if I were a cleric, I believe. And plus ten health retort on kill. <clears throat> okay, very good. Uh, this exceptional art shield. I don't really have anything anywhere that I want to place it on. Maybe for Shoti. But I do like this. The power levels on restoration spells. I don't think I'm going to swap this, sadly. And who are you? Gervard Calder. You find a young man with long blonde hair drawn back in a simple club. His clothes are spare but well tailored and his armor, a fine brigandine in blue and silver, is polished to a shine. He leans casually to one side, a clean hand on his hip, and sighs, bored. His eyes light up when he sees you. Hello there! Come to have a word? I don't bite, I promise. Yes? Oh, is this another one for training? Gladly, my friend. Gladly. And how kind of you to ask. He clears his throat with a theatrical wave of his hand. I am the youngest son of a noble house. Now, don't make that face. <laughs> Poor, desperate fool, you must be thinking. Well, waste not your sympathies on me. Truly, I consider it a boon rather than a punishment. All the comfort and none of the responsibility. What's not to like about that? What are you doing in the dead fire then? What else brings faraway travelers to the archipelago? Adventure. I've nursed a great love for heroic tales since my boyhood. As I was loafing about my father's estate, I thought, <laughs> well, Gervard, isn't it time you made a name for yourself as well? So here I am. And though I dare say I'm little use in a fist fight, I can do a fair bit of magic and draw a lovely map. So I've taken to okay. charting the interior wilderness of the Deadfire's larger islands. At least he knows where his strengths lie and he doesn't go, like, to kill himself in a fight. Well, that sounds dangerous in its own right. Ah, but it's <clears throat> worth it for the stories I'll one day have to tell. But truly, if I could only inspire others as I myself have been inspired by those old tales, why, it would be marvelous. Anyway, enough of my prattling. Surely you've other things to do. Well, can you teach me what you've learned in your travels? Oh, it would be my absolute pleasure. Uh, for a price, of course. 3,000 mm. copper? History and Arcana. Okay. Well, I'll be... So there's a couple of these. Um, I think if I go for someone, I, I would probably go for the one with stealth and I think sleight of hand. I need to remember where that was, but I, I could spend the 3,000 copper for that at the moment. Because I think I have something like 19, yeah, 18,000 gold. And I also have some stuff to sell. So I, I can get some monies currently. And I think now all I have to see is the base... Oh, oh never mind. I thought it was a basement, but apparently not. Okay. Well, I think we are done with Serpent's Crown. So I believe my next objective is going to be <clears throat> the Gullet. I do have one quest that we got from Pariki's Outlook or Overlook, which was to go to the... Uh, what is this? Ah, sell to a Songo. Um, God damn it, where can I find this now? Oh, I need, I need the candied nuts. Terms of trade. No, no. There, there are too many quests to pick up. Kill. No. Speak with Ana Hazanui at the Brass Citadel. I think I have something to do over here as well. Oh, God. So this is in the gullet. Yeah. This is another island. Uh, uh, charting. Oh, God. That's so much stuff, man. Oh, I forgot this guy. God damn it. I gotta, I gotta go back there. 
This is the gullet, this is bounties, cremate, that's a sacred stair, velvet glove, brass fist. Yeah, this is the one for Fascina, yeah. So I, I kind of want to go there as well, to the brass citadel, and see what can be done there. But let me just uh, maybe go back over here. Oh, I can't even go there just yet. I have to go through the sacred stair. Okay. Let me just complete this quest before I forget. Because we did pick up the, the satchel from the guy, but then we opened up to see the contents. And he's conspiring to kill his captain. And I think the kid was over here. Wait, where is he? Hot razor skewers, crested sword. Where is the kid? Return Dagno Satchel at the Peddler's Canal in Queen's Birth. Oh, it's... <clears throat> sorry, it's not here. It's in a different place. Okay, I'll, I'll go there then. And I think that would also maybe give me a way... Oh, okay. So from this east exit I can go to the Gullet, the Sacred Stair and also the Brass Citadel. Well, let's go there then. Over the bitch. Okay. I'm kind of leaving the best for last, but I, I really want to go into the gullet. Because it seems like the most interesting area. Halt. What is your business at the Brass Citadel? Uh, I met Hazanui Karu at the palace. You're the Watcher. The one who nearly caused a riot in Queensburg. His mouth quirks in a grin. The Grand Secretary Atsura wants to meet you. His office is on the lower level of Imperial Command. Up the stairs. He points to the steps. He looks very regal. Once you're inside, go downstairs through the room on the right. What about the Hasanui? Her office is at the back of Imperial Command. She is busy organizing other matters. He clears his throat. But I am sure she will grant you an audience. Okay. Please. No Valian spy is coming through on my watch. I'm a merchant. I have business inside. You want to see our walls, our cannons, our powder house. You must think I'm an idiot. Back, you've got one thing. <laughs> okay, let's quick save this. A well dressed Valian and a young but determined guard are arguing by the gate. The Royal Dead Fire Company is a trading company, is it not? And you are on Kahanga soil. You cannot turn me away. The Valian's words only anger the guard further. Her face darkens and she grits her pointed teeth. The Brass Citadel and the Royal Dead Fire Company operate under the auspices of the Ranganui of Rawatai. There's so much stuff to take in, man. Ranganui, the title of the ruler of the Rawatai Empire, derived from Ranga, the Huana term for chieftain. She straightens her shoulders and crosses her forearms over her chest in a stiff salute. We answer to him, not to you. And certainly not to some tribal queen of Nekataka. Oh god, okay. So this is a... Okay, so this is a separate... Uh, there are the Juana, and then there are, there are the Rawataians. I still haven't fully understood how they work, but let's just keep going. Let's all take a deep breath. I'm sure we can work this out. Oh, you're one of those. One of those? She crosses her arms. These Valians are always sending their spies to snoop around, and I won't have it. The guard glares at the merchant even as she speaks to you. The merchant rolls her eyes. And these Rawataians think they own anything they stack two stones on top of. Mm. I am here to conduct business, not engage in petty power struggles. Um, I mean, let's explore how this goes. Let the merchant pass. What? She's up to no good. I know it. So we have insight, we have stealth, and we have bluff. No, you just don't trust Valiant. And she's right. This is no way to run a trading company in post. So have her follow to see where she goes and whom she meets. I can vouch for her. 
Let's let's go for this one. No, you just don't trust Valians. The guard makes a frustrated sound at the back of her throat. Fine, but if you're wrong, we're gonna have a talk later. She glares at you before nodding the Valian on. Agressi, my friend. She doffs her hat to you before departing. She doesn't have a hat. <laughs> okay. These are stairs going uh, somewhere? Oh, upstairs, okay. The cannon looks recently polished. Rabatayan guards. Blue skies. The locals don't know how good they have it. Two guards gaze over the ramparts of the vista. Queen's bird shining in the near distance and the rippling sea beyond. Can you believe your eyes? I've never seen such a fair, pristine land. If you like this, you must see the jungles of Adir and the valleys of the living lands. Sure. I've heard they're grand, but I can't imagine they compare to this. Shoti liked it. Cool. I grew up surrounded by storms and stones. <laughs> Rawatai is my soul. But this place has enchanted me. Uh, he blinks quickly as if afraid to miss the view, even for a moment. It's the land. Fertile, green, and abundant. <clears throat> no, it's something else. I just can't put my finger on what. He scratches the back of his head and squints, perhaps hoping to find the answer somewhere in the view. You're drawn to the potential it represents. There's so much here. So much we could make of this place. Perhaps that's it. He turns back to the view, drinking it in. Okay, I think this was just a chance to, to make Shoti happy with that comment, I guess. Imperial command to Mara. All this trouble over a tablet of fucking stone. If my company oh. standing wasn't on the line, I would have written this one off as a loss already. So this was the lady in front of Archimedes' mansion, I think. To Mara nurses her brow and motions for you to speak. Any ideas on retrieving the Arapo epic? I heard tell of Ephrin, a thief with a penchant for making house calls. Hmm. Word has it that Ephrin made his way inside of Archimedes' manor and later died. Is that the guy selling fortunes at the dark cupboard? Now his soul is bound to the yeah, fortune telling machine in the dark cupboard. <laughs> strange fate. Um, you and Neteje don't seem to get along. All of her pretenses of cultural pride are a means to an end. Like the rest of the Hawana, she isn't above exploiting any advantage if she can profit from it. Hmm. That doesn't seem fair. The Hawana are trying to get by. As you say. Takehu pinches his lower lip and smiles. Pro Juana. Ah. Okay, just just goodbye. I don't think she has anything interesting to say right now. Who is this guy? He's the Lord College Chanter. What disaster dark in this hall? Okay. Just keep on barking over there. Powder House Upper. Lo it says locked. So it cannot be lockpicked. Guessing that's something for later. <laughs> Interesting. We cannot enter here either. Here we have a Kwaru artisan. Why Ranga carve his name into a rock? The Ranga Nui. And it's a commemoration. To show what he built. Oh. Then did your Reparo also write their names on other stones? For the glory of Rawatai and the strength of the Ranganui. 2818 AI. For what do you squawk and gloat over a heap of stones? Akira, you Rawataians are strange cousins indeed. A well-dressed one, a woman, shakes her head at the Rawataian man. The tone of their debate is spirited but not unfriendly. The Brass Citadel is a marvel of modern engineering. With the gates barred and the cannons primed, it can withstand any attack and weather any storm. Ian is one a friend turned to regard you. Surely you can see what a fine stronghold this is. It's an excellent fort, sturdy and built last. I'm sure someone once said the same about the ancient places in Deadfire, before storms and volcanoes made ruins of them. 
Pro Rawatai, Takei who worries one of his hairs between two fingers. I think he disliked what I said. We transformed a rocky cove into the best defended harbor in Nekataka. Such achievements must be celebrated. This rocky cove was once a prized fishing spot for the Riparu. These Rawataians act as if every bare islet is merely awaiting a fort or a farm. Mm. They cannot look at anything without planning to change it. To strive is to survive. Those who would achieve greatness must make the world a better, more ordered place than they found it. Why change the world when you can learn to live in it the way it is? This is what my people have done for thousands of years. Interesting debate. <clears throat> There's valid points on both sides. Hmm. I mean, none of these answers are really up to my liking. This one is the closest one. We should ask ourselves what provides the greatest benefit. A fishing spot or a harbor? Naturally, the harbor is going to benefit a larger place, but the fishing spot is also very pretty. But it's probably not as useful. Although I think we must preserve some of those spots, because otherwise, every single place we have would be a factory. And I don't like that either. Mm. Maybe, of course, it's noble and worthwhile to build great things. But for what purpose? And at what cost? She spreads her hands to you in question, but, it, but she isn't angry. So worldly, shoti nibbles on her lips to hide a spreading smile. So she liked that. Akira, nothing invigorates like a good discussion. Thank you for indulging us. She grins. With that, they turn from you and resume their discussion. Yeah, okay. I think there's a lot of these uh, dialogues that only count for you to, you know, change your reputation with your companions because there's nothing else here and they don't have any unique names. Simply when I tab, you'll see that this one doesn't show his name, but this one does. And I think that's a tell between you can either speak to them or you cannot. Okay, so Imperial Command, sure. Officer's Lounge. With sails unfurled and sword held high. To battle for glory and Rautai. Faithfully done, Emiani. Report to Wakoyo Nui when your hands and your temper have healed. She was holding a cannonball. That's the last time I ship out with some soft handed runt. Come to Gok, too? My punishment's over, you know. Hmm. She looks away and crosses her arms carefully to hide her burdened hands. Oh, it was hot. Why were you holding a red hot cannonball? She glances back at you, a look of defiance in her eye. I punched my captain. Ah, that's why. It's as if the mere mention of the incident takes her back to it. Her face darkens with anger and a bit of snarl transforms her features. Though maybe he shouldn't have insulted my aim. Like I don't know the difference between a smooth and rifled boar. She shakes her head, quietly stewing. And what are you going to do now? I'm not reporting back to Wakoyo, that's for sure. I crewed on mercenary ships before this. Come to think of it, that suited me better. She grins impishly. Still a scramble root at heart, I guess. Oh! But I'm plenty experienced. Maybe I'll see if anyone's looking for an expert cannoneer. I can take you in, I guess. I could use an experienced cannoneer on my crew. She looks you up and down, considering your offer. Don't take this the wrong way, but I only crew with Aww. captains I know, either personally or by reputation. I'm sure you're capable, but I don't know enough about you yet. Okay, so maybe we need to gain some kind of reputation before she comes in. Okay, try to keep that in mind. Her eyebrow quirks up in hopeful suggestion. Let's talk again when you've made a name for yourself. Okay, okay, okay. An Orlan peddler. Hello there. Always nice to see another furry face around here. <laughs> she winks at you. I've got all sorts of goods and supplies. Take a look before you head back out. Oh, please tell me you have candied nuts. Why are you working at the Rawatine outpost? Because I'm from Rawatine. Or, to be more specific, my ancestral home's been part of the Empire for decades. Few generations now. Um... How did your homeland become part of Rawatai? The usual way, I guess. Their soldiers beat ours. 
Fair enough. She shrugs. Doesn't that bother you? She glances around to see if anyone is in here shot. I guess it used to. When I was younger, I grew up hearing stories of the time before from my grandparents. But they were children themselves when Rawatai took over. She frowns at you thoughtfully. Some wax romantic about the old days. Anyways, I'm just trying to make a living. That's why I'm here, after all. What's it like living under Rawatai rule? I don't know. I never known anything else. We've got the Rawataians fancy new irrigation canals now, and the roads have gotten better. The ones leading into Tokoa, anyhow. She pauses, lost in thought, and smirks. Funny thing is, the further you go on them, the nicer everything gets, and the more it all looks like this. She nods at the stone walls and towers. <clears throat> so I guess that the Rawatai are more pro-progress and pro-evolution, and the Juana are more traditional and want to keep things as they are. Okay, interesting take. Let's get back to business. That's a better subject. Uh, let's see what you have. Take a look. Oh, wait, she has a lot of different things. Gauntlets of Ogre Might plus two Might. Always good. Ring of Great Regeneration. Three health restored. Very nice as well for it there. Charm of Bones. Ech, char I don't like charges. Summon the random vessel. Plus two intellect, plus five accuracy against vessels. Interesting. Uh, what, are, what are these sigils again? These ward stones. Ward stones offer safeguards against the dangerous powers of sigils. Sigils take many different forms, but all sigils pulse dangerous magic when they are approached. Ward stones counter the corresponding sigils magic for the user and all nearby allies. I don't know what this is. Immune to sigil of atrophy. If they were cheaper, I would just buy them in case I face some of these uh, sigils. For now, I'll just leave them. Oh, lockpicks I'll take. I've been spending a lot of lockpicks recently. <clears throat> she doesn't have any kind of candied nuts, which makes me sad. Oh, and there's Berteno. Let's quick save this. Beat it. I don't have time to chit chat. The thin Valian glances over your shoulder with an expectant frown. Shouldn't you be at work or something? This is no place for the likes of you. Bitch, you are off to a bad start. He frowns with disapproval. You stole a pair of gloves from the dark cupboard. Give them to me. Not a chance, Aimiko. He narrows his eyes at you. Fasina sent you, didn't she? Postenago, just for these. Shaking his head, he pulls a pair of fine gloves from his pocket, studying them with evident disappointment. Soft as down, but not a single fence willing to pay me a fair price. Maybe they've got imp stink all over them. Hmm. You're going to have a hard time selling the... Uh, you're going to have a hard time selling an Archmage's gloves for fast coin. Should have guessed these were bad luck. Well, it's too late to go making smart decisions, isn't it? <laughs> Just give me one second. And I am back, sorry. Cordon Pina just came home with warm bread. And <laughs> if there is something I cannot resist, it is warm bread. Um, so let's see, where were we? Should have guessed it was bad luck. Yeah, okay. He opens his mouth to say more, but something to the southwest distracts him. And his expression fills with dread. Here he comes, and I'm too late. If Hamuto doesn't give me an extension on my debt, I'm a dead man. Hmm. Can we try to save him? Keep your mouth shut and follow my lead. Glancing at you, Berteno shrugs and swallows down a lump in his throat. Okay, so we're gonna try and help him, I guess. A unit of steely-eyed sailors approach the docks, clutching pikes and firearms with quiet professionalism. At their head stands a tall Omawa in a mustard-yellow uniform. He turns his attention between you and Berteno. So, Berteno, you hired a mercenary. Or else a negotiator. That coin should have gone toward your debt to me. <laughs> Amutu rubs a long scar that extends the length of his neck. Huh? No, I didn't. Uh, that is, uh, I would never go behind your back. I... Berteno's voice falters and he turns to you with sudden panic. Okay, so what do we have? <laughs> I like this. Well, I mean, 
I could go for this, which is honestly the, the best answer, I think. I came for a pair of gloves that Perteno stole. This isn't my problem. Hamuto, I wondered if you might take them as a payment on my debt, or maybe for an extension. I possess gloves of my own, and they suffice for my needs. The captain focuses on you with a cool, dispassionate look. This is a private matter. Your interference is unnecessary. Amuto spreads his hands in a peaceful manner as his soldiers level their guns at Berteno. <clears throat> hmm. You sound more reasonable than I was led to believe. Do I? One can be adherent to the tenets of maritime law and still be seen as a monster. What is your plan for Berteno? Indentured servitude. Well, I trust this is a more honest and respectable alternative than any pursuit he would take on his own terms. Hmm. Perhaps I can pay what's owed? Depends on what's owed, naturally. You must care a great deal for this insufferable little worm to stake your purse on his freedom. Hamutu taps his lower lip in thought. 400 pyres are what Berteno owes. Hmm. When I will accept that sum to have this sorry business concluded. I mean, <clears throat> 400, I guess I can pay this. He doesn't deserve it, but indentured servitude. <sighs> well, let's, let's, let's at least hope he learns the lesson and doesn't continue his, his stupid ways. Okay, payment is agreed. Then our business is concluded. And Mutu signals his men to stand down. After a hateful look, they lower their arms and follow their captain's lead. You better be very thankful, bitch, and give me those I, gloves. I can't believe I'm finally out of debt. For the first time in my life, I'm free. Berteno clasps his hands together, tears brimming at the corners of his eyes. Technically, you're indebted to me. Or I can just slap him. Yeah, I'm gonna slap him because he deserves it. His head snaps to the side and he slowly turns to you, cupping his cheek and looking stunned. What? What was that for? You were being extremely ungrateful. Oh yeah? How's this for gratitude? He throws a pair of gloves at you and sprints away. What a bitch. You should have just gone with them. God damn it, man. Yeah, yeah, you did not deserve this. You did not deserve that, man. Okay, so let, let's see. We picked up Rokawa's Fingers, a quest item. Ooh. That also gives the user plus one to dexterity, plus one start of hand, and grants spark crackers. It's a bomb, two per rest, if successful, distracted for 16 seconds. I like this. This is cool. But we have to give them back. Maybe I can give them back and then steal them again? <clears throat> I don't know. We shall see. Now all that's left is to return to Fasina, from what showed up over there, to conclude this quest. But first, I want to show Cordon Penis something over here. You that will do, I say. Because you see over here, there's Chonchi. Yes, Chonchi. Best, best Chonchi. <laughs> yes. This is Mr. Piggy, all grown up yes. from Pillars of Eternity One. God, he's big. He is big and strong, Chonchi. Yes. But now look, I have Ginger L. Azri. Pumpkin eater. <laughs> and he's very pink. That's very cute. I haven't actually tried them on. Let me see. Uh, so go over here. Chonchi, stay here for a moment. Yes, uh, Chonchi. Go. Where can I put this? Go go there. Oh, oh he's so pinky. He's very pinky. Ginger. What can I do you for? <laughs> so what, what's the name again? Ginger. Ginger L. Esri? Ginger L. Ezri, yeah, she has a much better memory than, than I do. <laughs> Pumpkin, eater. Pumpkin eater. So cute. He's very cute. I think I like the model from Chonchi a little bit better. But he's, but he's also very cute. He's also cute. He's very cute. He's very cute too. But yeah, yeah Chonchi best. Chonchi yeah, we're gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna stick so with yeah, Chonchi for yeah, now. Yeah. So Chonchi, I mean, come Chonchi's here. Chonchi's Chonchi. So yeah, Chonchi's Chonchi. So yeah. He's very cute. Yeah, Chonchi wins. Happy to oblige. Chonchi wins. <laughs> <laughs> Sure thing. Okay, let us continue. Um, what else did we have? We, ooh, we, oh, oh, kitty, 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 kajuks. 
20 health restored per kill and 10% stride. Okay, <clears throat> not something that I really want. A chest. Okay, doesn't really matter. But yeah, and that guy, Bertuto or whatever his name was, I should have just left him to go in indentured servitude because he, he clearly did not learn his lesson. There's a gunsmithy here, Utos. Oh, I think we heard from this guy. When we were back in Queen's Birth, in the back alley where near where the, um, the fight with the brigands happens, there's a lady there that sells equipment that she mentioned that Uto was a cool guy for um, uh, firearms. And I do enjoy firearms. The scrolls are filled with meticulous diagrams of rifles and pistols. Apprentice gunsmiths. Ooh, and stuff to steal. I will steal everything here. These guns look ancient, but the metals is, but the metals is still polished? No. The metals are still polished. And the wood perfectly smooth. Yes, learning English with cordon here. What is it? Yes, what yes. Yes. We shall steal everything. <laughs> so this cost me one lockpick, <clears throat> which means experience. Nice. Finished. 200. Oh, oh, an exceptional blunderbuss. Gimme. Just regular stuff, doesn't matter. Mechanic skill too low. Can I steal a key? I I just just barely. Okay, I can steal the key. Uh, but I I can't reach that, can I? Can I like reach it from over here, maybe? Sorry, this this always takes a little while, but I, I need to check if I can do this. You know what would help me here? The stupid boots that Seraphon took. I'll see it done. God damn it, man. <clears throat> yeah, I needed those boots. Do I have them uh, bounding? Yeah. God damn it, man. I gotta, I gotta. Uh. Yes. Okay. Well, I'll take care. Uh, I'm gonna try it, even though I, I don't believe it will ever work. Leave it to me. Yeah, there's just no chance. Okay, I'm just gonna quick save to test something here. Quick save. And while being detected... Where do you think you're going? Okay, it doesn't say anything about... Losing reputation, but I don't, I don't like that interaction. Okay, let's, let's just back up here. We're gonna back up and I think I'm gonna have to go and get the boots to try and steal from that chest. And then we'll see. Okay, Mr. Uto, what do you have? Oh, he has a black eye, that's what he has. <clears throat> the man greets you with arms crossed over his chest. He has a mass of scar tissue where his left eye would be and his hands are knotted with bulging tendons. Looking for a pistol or an arquebus? Rawatai makes the finest guns in Aora. And I make the finest guns in Rawatai. And what makes your gun so special? Craftsmanship. He holds out his knotted hands, keeping them entirely still as he speaks to you. They're covered in small burns and scars that blur the varied pigmentation of his skin. If you ask my superiors <clears throat> at Imperial Command, they'll tell you our main exports are saltpeter and metal. Those are just things. They're prized because of what we do with them. He reaches under the counter and presents a blunderbuss, holding it out for your inspection with his ever-steady hands. It's a high-quality piece. Rawatayan industry is about discipline, precision, mastery of a careful art. Those qualities guide all that we build. He puts the blunderbuss away. <clears throat> well, let's see what you have. Ooh, he has a very expensive archivist, Dragon's Dowry. So, archivist, legendary. Penetration 13. Uh huh. Veil piercing. Dragon's Breath. Grants Dragon's Breath. So once per rest, <clears throat> it creates a wall of fire, I guess. 
generates a fearsome vertical sheet of flame inflicting burn damage on anyone moving through it. <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> nothing... Nothing particularly special, it's just a, a once per rest wall of fire. Rune lock. 10% chance for wielder to suffer 10 burn damage on launching an attack. That sucks. Plus 20% damages burn. Ah, so it has a burn lash. Rufus Akmont, Elder Gunsmith of the Forged in Fire, a militant Magranite warband, crafted this Arcubus for his own use during the Saints' War. Unwilling to trust his life to a weapon unless it had the blessing of Magran, he melded fire and steel into an instrument of blazing destruction. The gun's firing mechanism is unique, as it does not rely on flint or match to spark the pen. Instead, ornate arcane symbols on the hammer and frizzen provide the necessary ignition for the primer. This rune lock, as Rufus called it, is effective and reliable. Dragon's Dowry fires lead balls wreathed in fire. When loaded with rune powder, it can belch forth a torrent of pure flame. Unfortunately, the unstable magics that provide such power are unpredictable. On occasion, hot powder can blow backwards upon firing, burning the shooter. Rufus saw this not as a drawback of his creation, but as a just offering to Magran. The burns that pocked his cheeks hands and arms were symbols of his penitence and his god's good favor. <clears throat> Let me check out the enchantments here because this looks like a, a worthy weapon for us to pick up at some point. So rune lock is a chance. Stable rune lock. Lowers the... okay, lowers the chance. Ah, wait. So the stable rune lock lowers the chance, but we still deal 20% chance uh, damage is burn. Or we have a 15% chance to take 15 burn damage, but we deal 30% damage as burn. I like this very much. Blazing Fury. <clears throat> Grants Blazing Fury. Oh god. Plus 40% action speed for 20 seconds, 5 burn damage per 3 seconds. God damn, why always 1 per rest? But 40% action speed? I like that. I like that a lot. Serpent's Rage. One per rest is um, uh, also. <clears throat> Target. What? Fires a cluster of unavoidable fire projectiles inflicting burn damage. The burst of rune powder causes the wielder to receive burn damage, however. So we deal 16... Oh, 5 projectiles. So we deal 5 times 6 to 9 burn damage, and it's unavoidable. <clears throat> Being unavoidable is actually quite cool. But I think Blazing Fury is better, right? Okay, so this is a weapon that I probably will want to buy at some point, but right now, it's, it's extremely expensive. I wish he could give me a quest to then I could get some kind of discount, but <coughs> it doesn't look like it. He sells cannons and sc Scordios Trophy. A pistol, a superb pistol. Opening shot. Scoring hits with this weapon grants a stacking man minus 5% recovery time with melee weapons for 30 seconds. <clears throat> this is very uninteresting for my character. But plus 15% crit damage, it kind of overrides the blunted criticals. Could be cool. And so, critical shot, obliterating crit, more crit damage, or penetrating, cool. And opening barrage... Ah! So this is for melee weapons only, this is for any kind of weapon. Strategic Blitz. 10% for melee weapons. This is also a very cool weapon. <clears throat> it is a pistol, so it's not as good <clears throat> as an Arquebus for my build. But it's a very good weapon. Okay, so yeah, this guy has some very interesting stuff. It's just really a shame that I cannot... I'll see it done. Ugh. Yeah, I would need the boots to get to get a, to get away with this. Yes. Okay. Man, just imagine if the guy has the dragon's dowry in that chest. No, baby. I would be very happy. What else do we have? Uh, I have these two places to explore. So the Fleet Master's office. OK. 
Okay. An inscription reads, that which grows is, strict is strengthened uh, by Coral Mason Torquo. This map shows shipping routes from Deadfire to Rawatai. Oh, we cannot get there. Bodyguards and Fleetmaster Wak Wakoyo. This is counted as stealing. Okay. Clear skies, my friend. Wakoyo crosses his arms and tips his head to the side. A long scar traces a path down his face, curving sharply where his cheek rises with a smile. Greetings. The boats of our decorated armada have orders which spread them thinly across the archipelago. Rawatai finds itself in need of a privateer. His brow rises as he speaks the word. Your ship, unmoored from deadfire politics, is an asset I would grasp with both hands. An arrangement can help us both. You will empty the seas of competition in exchange for profit. Hmm. Aren't you afraid that privateering will start a war? An official reckoning is drafted to account for every cannonball shot in the name of Rawatai. Our paperwork is most thorough. For every ship sunk, there is a legal justification. Our enemies will know the war is started on the day we fail to turn in our paperwork. Hmm. So another bounty giver, holy crap, man. A Scylla wave skipper is your first target. A pirate shirking any pretense of lawful conduct in the open seas. Wakoyo Gribus is an itches at his car. <clears throat> sure, I'll take excellent. it. A Scylla commands the Voyager River Dragon, which pesters a group of islands to the southwest of Port Maje. Okay. So, farewell for now. Uh, I want to see if I can rob Foolish. him. Not sure if I have a place where I can... Oh, I, I do. I do. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, can I lockpick this? No, it's... Ooh, 15. Jesus Christ. Ah, you bitch. Yeah, I need the items from Seraphon. He has the stealth boots. He has the, the leap boots. Yeah, I need this stuff. Oh, this is an exit. This is the... Powder House Guard. I'm sorry, but this area is strictly off limits. The young guard draws himself up to his full height, crossing his arms. What is this place? Private property of the Royal Deadfire Company, that's what. He eyes you warily. Can I just look around inside? Sorry, my orders come from the Hazanui herself. Hmm, diplomacy. Come on, I can't get into it that much trouble. Not when this place is so well guarded. All it would take is one stray flame, one errant spark. He catches himself and stops, shaking his head. No, I'm sorry, but you really don't understand. <clears throat> okay. Well, <laughs> let's just leave then. We cannot get in there through here or through there. We've been to the Fleet Master's office. Let's go to the officer's lounge. There's a lot of stuff here that seems like the game wants you to come here at a much later point where you have a lot more mechanic skill or much more stealth. She respects that. Someone named Piro is trouncing his opponent at Azator. I don't think she likes me. I spend most of my career escorting Cargo manifest shows salt Peter received from Rawatai and raw foodstuffs shipped roots, back. But don't stare at her hand. The notice reads, service reserved for officers of the Royal Dead Fire Company. If this is about the Hazatoa tournament, I've got nothing to do with that, all right? I just serve the drinks. <laughs> he holds up his hands with the exhausted resignation of a man who's made his case many times. What's this about Hazatoa? Some of the soldiers and sailors get to making unwise bets when they play. He rolls his eyes. Like I said, I keep out of it. None of the regulars are looking for new opponents, though, if that's what you're asking. Hmm. All the better for you, trust me. Why do you work for the Royal Dead Fire Company? They always pay on time. They're run by the Ranganui, so they should, right? Uh, yeah, the ruler. He grins. Also, I'm from a town near Tekoa. Rautai is full of all kinds of kith, not just Amawa. But the Amawa have a long history at sea. They make up a lot of sailors and soldiers, including most of the ones that ended up here. Okay, he nods at, uh, he nods at vaguely at the bar. He nods at vaguely at the bar. Hmm. 
I'd like to order something. I'm really only supposed to sell to captains working for the Royal Deadfire Company. You bitch. He taps a sign near the bar. So what's the point of this place? Maybe something for the future, I guess. Oh. Play jokes on anyone. Ikara, I once sold a water globe to a Mataru priest. It was filled with mm. live fish. That doesn't sound like much of a joke. The trick was letting the sculpture break down while he slept with it over his head. Oh, I'm getting so many ideas right <laughs> now. How would you feel about betraying the Watcher's trust? Mm. You bitch. Imperial command. Was ist das? A very big building. The air around the coral thrums with life-sustaining magic. Oh, no, 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 no! Sorry, sorry. I didn't steal anything. <laughs> it's fine. Ooh, a weapon master and I can speak to him. Oh, okay. I guess this guy will also teach me something. Oh, never mind. If the villains are behind the the mess at the song, well, they'll pay. So I think the dialogue switched um, to reflect my current quest. Hazanui Karu. A game of Azato is in progress. A plaque below the coral reads, a piece of Rawatai for dead fire, compliments of coral mason Rua. In glory, your Ranganui. Hazanui Karu places near her de Oh, so this was a lady in, um, at the palace. Looking like a shark circling the shallows. She clenches a long, elegant pipe between her teeth, the smoke trailing an acrid wake behind her. She looks up when you enter and favors you with a brief nod of acknowledgement. The former lord of Kadnua and one time terrifier of harbor masters. <laughs> if dockside tales are to be believed. I like this title. She smiles briefly through the smoke. You have not brought much good news of late. What? Her pensive look returns. So, in addition to pirates, profiteers, and slavers, the dead fire has a vengeful god roaming its waters? <laughs> yeah, true. She bites down harder on her pipe. At least it's not skein. <laughs> yeah, things would be worse, at least not skein. Tell that to my dead at a song. Nice! So they like it when I'm light-hearted. Okay. Well, she didn't. She lapses into a brief silence, puffing on her pipe. Just what the archipelago needs. One more disaster tugging at the seams. He must be stopped. She halts, turning to face you. You are finally able to get a good look at her. She's not especially large for an Omawa, but she carries her, her shoulders high. Her weathered face looks to have seen many storm-blown and sun-beaten days on deck, Yet her eyes are sharp and keen. That's why I came to you all at the palace. She waves a hand dismissively. If there were help to be found at the palace, do you think Deadfire would be such a mess? The Valians won't lift a finger if it isn't to snatch a coin. And the Huana will barely do that much. Hmm. No? Tell it to the water shapers who washed your stranded boats from sandbars, Hazanui. The K who folds his arms and waits. No one takes charge to solve the big problems. But perhaps we could work together to our mutual benefit. Give me quests. Give me quests. <clears throat> she takes the pipe in her left hand. As she does, you notice that her right is unusually still. Wait, what? Oh, her right hand is unusually still. Perhaps we could. Look around. Dead fires full of fertile, temperate islands. Except for Andra's mortar. It's largely free of rough weather. She waves her right hand and you notice again that her fingers remain strangely still. You realize it's an unusually fine prosthetic. Yet much of it is uninhabited. Itinerant tribes drift between some of the islands and smugglers and slavers cluster around the rest. She shakes her head. It's a waste. Imagine what this place could be with well-guarded shipping routes. How many Rawataians we could feed with plantations here? Hmm. So yeah, they, they want to conquer more land. 
<clears throat> Let me just... Okay, so fertile land, blah blah blah... Yeah, she wants to take care of those islands. Well, I mean, that's a... I, I guess that's a worthy venture if it's not being used for anything. Or I can just say this, so you're exploiting dead fire for the sake of Rawatai. That's a naive view. One our enemies are keen to promote. She scowls, biting down on her pipe. Takeho being pro Juana liked it. Rautai's violent storms have shaped and hardened us as much as they have our homeland's rocky terrain. But it remains a difficult place to live. So, we rely on trade. And on plantations we've established here. And those developments also create a more stable, productive deadfire. She spreads both hands wide as if that explains it. Hmm. Okay, so what does that have to do with me? You've got a good head on your shoulders. Deadfire needs more of that. If you're chasing the god who's stomping this place into the ground, then we have a common goal. And if you're going to survive here, then you could use an ally. A hint of a smile tugs her lips from her tar-stained teeth. What do you have in mind? The disaster at Hasongo remains a key concern. We rely on the port there to ship food back to Rawatai. Okay, I really need to get to a Songo to understand what's happening here. She sucks on the pipe, hiding her worried expression behind a cloud of smoke. That's on hold until you investigate. Short of <clears> that, <throat> there are other matters that demand attention. Atsura, our Grand Secretary, has a plan that would make use of your unusual talents. His office is downstairs. He can tell you more. Okay. What happened to your hand? She extends her arm, holding her prosthetic between you. It's an exquisite piece with reinforced joints in each of the fingers and a smooth sanded finish. It happened a year into my first command. We were chasing pirates along Rawatai's south coast, and they landed a shot right next to our magazine. Mm. A lucky hit. She's quiet for a moment. I ran below. The fire was already spreading and making for our powder stores. What did you do? I smothered what I could with my uniform, pulled the rest away with my own hands. <clears throat> if you hadn't, you and your crew would probably have died. She nods. We don't get to choose our challenges, do we? Just the way we meet them. There's a cost to every victory. And the win goes to those willing to make a sacrifice. Well said. She considers the wooden hand, turning it in the light. You send satisfaction in her gaze. I'll bet you already know a thing or two about that. And if you don't, Deadfire will teach you soon enough. What's the game board for? Hazatoa. Atsura and I usually have a game running. And this one's been going on for over a month and a half. Jesus. Atsura's good at misdirection. But I've got a mind for the long game. You look like you've come with a purpose. No, for well. Okay. So, I'm trying to, I'm starting to see um, the game trying to branch out into different factions here. Sabormi. A young woman with a bright white smile and eyes to match raises her hands and gives you a quick but enthusiastic wave. Then, with an exaggerated look of embarrassment, she stops herself and crosses her forearms over her chest. I always forget that part. Say, you're the Watcher of Cad Nua, aren't you? I've never met anyone famous before. <laughs> Except the Hazanui. She yells at me sometimes. Her grin widens impossibly. The Hazanui yells at you? Oh, all the time. She screws her face up into a look of mock seriousness. Still, she can't keep from smiling. Where's my white leaf? Stop daydreaming. So, Bormi, if you lose the letters again, I'll have you clean the latrines. <laughs> At this last comment, she leans close, her eyes wide and voice low with awe. All this time, I didn't realize she knew my name. <laughs> Are you always this, this excitable? It's just, this is my first time away from the rough country. An affectionate Rawatayan term for their homeland. Rough refers to both the un unyielding, rocky soils and the storms that batter the mainland. I'd heard there were thick, green forests and sandy beaches without a storm in sight, but I never imagined this. She shakes her head in wonderment. You must have traveled lots, seen all sorts of amazing places. 
Sabormi folds her hands under her chin, watching you intently. Hmm. And had adventures you wouldn't believe. See the world, Sabormi. Travel is grand. I sure hope to. Yeah. I'd love Rawatai, but it's hard to go a week without seeing storms or hearing about mudslides burying a village somewhere. Her buoyant expression sags, but only for a moment. You're the quartermaster, can you sell me something? Her face crunches up in disappointment. I really wish I could, but my supplies are for the Royal Deadfire Company and our allies. Has the newies orders. Okay, so I guess that if we gain enough reputation with uh, the Royal Deadfire Company, I can access these stores. Maybe if you impress her or Atsura, yeah, they could make an exception. She smiles hopefully. Okay, farewell. Can I just come over here? Oh-ho! Yes, I'll take care of it. Okay. Yes. Oh, that was what is it? silly of me. What Sorry. Let me take this. I'll see it done. Correspondence between Captains Raiki and Mascoro. To the oft admired but questionably attired Captain Riki. This letter should be reached the, the brass little long before I do, which is lucky for you because you'll need the time to make some Hazatoa winnings to settle our last bet. Never challenge a captain of the Rukwa the Rukwapa. Oh it's too much text. The Rukwapa are an elite group of specially trained warriors who personally carry out the Ranganui's will. Okay. A uh, short of kernel spitting contest. My eldest knitted a pair of those fancy socks you love, though I hear that fire is the kind of place where it's nice to feel the sand between your toes. Maybe it really is the, hev the haven everyone says it is. You'll know before I do. When you see our sails, have a pair of razor skewers, some rack, and about 30 palohe nuts of varying sizes ready. In grand, de uh, in grand deeds and ill-advised wagers, Captain Mascoro. <clears throat> okay. As you wish. And I guess our next objective is to go downstairs to the lower Imperial Command, but that will have to happen in the next episode, my friends. We are still picking up quests, we are still meeting new NPCs, <laughs> a lot of different factions, a lot of stuff to take in, but, you know, world building is exceptional in this game so far, and I'm very much enjoying it. I hope you guys are too. Um, as always, Thank you so much for being here in the channel with me, watching some PoE2 Dead Fire. God damn it, I, I always forget to put the numbers. Game. Thank you. Um, if you guys have any questions or suggestions, you know what to do. Leave a comment below. If you are enjoying the content, consider subscribing for more. There's videos coming out every single day. And I hope to see you all in the next episode. Until then, stay safe everyone.